The accelerated approval pathway has allowed the Food and Drug Administration to expedite approvals of drugs for serious and life-threatening diseases. In certain cases, such as when confirmatory trials don't verify a drug's clinical benefit, accelerated approvals may be withdrawn. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Managing Editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm talking with Bindu Kanapuru, a hematologist-oncologist physician in the Office of Oncologic Disease at the FDA Center for Drug Evaluation and Research. Dr. Kanapuru has co-authored a perspective article about a new expedited withdrawal process and the first accelerated approval withdrawn using this pathway. Dr. Kanapuru, broadly, what are the goals of the accelerated approval program and how often has it been used? The accelerated approval program was first developed in 1992 in response to the HIV AIDS crisis but has led to the expedited drug and biologic approvals in several disease areas across the FDA. Accelerated approval, as you pointed out, allows for earlier access to safe and effective drugs and biologics on the basis that products have an effect on a surrogate endpoint that is reasonably likely to predict clinical benefit or on a clinical endpoint that can be measured earlier than irreversible morbidity or mortality and that is reasonably likely to predict an effect on irreversible morbidity or mortality or other clinical benefit. It also considers the severity, rarity, or prevalence of the condition and the availability or lack of alternative treatments. Although the program was first developed in response to the HIV-AIDS crisis, the majority of accelerated approvals have been granted for oncology indications. And since 1992, oncology has had 201 accelerated approvals. And then what type of research and review typically occur after an accelerated approval to confirm a drug's clinical benefit? First, uh, before I answer that question, I want to mention that for a drug granted accelerated approval or traditional approval, the drug has to demonstrate substantial evidence of effectiveness and the benefit of the drug should outweigh the risk for the intended use. Or as a condition of accelerated approval, the FDA has the authority to require the applicant to conduct confirmatory trial or trials to verify the clinical benefit of the drug. This confirmatory trial is usually a randomized trial with an endpoint that demonstrates an effect on irreversible morbidity or mortality. In oncology, the clinical benefit endpoints are generally progression-free survival or PFS or overall survival or OS. If these trials are completed post-approval, verify the clinical benefit of an indication granted accelerated approval, the indication is granted traditional approval. However, if the confirmatory trial does not show that the drug provides clinical benefit, FDA has regulatory procedures in place that could lead to removing the drug from the market. FDA may also require that the confirmatory trials be underway at the time of accelerated approval. And at the time of accelerated approval, post-marketing requirements are agreed to by the company and the FDA. And these agreements include the projected date by which the post-approval confirmatory trial will be completed and the projected date by which the final report of these studies will be submitted to the FDA. And how common is it for an accelerated approval to be withdrawn? To give a direct answer, it's not very common. As noted in the article, since the inception of the accelerated approval program, Only three accelerated approval indications were withdrawn by the FDA through the formal withdrawal process. Two of these were in oncology, including the recent melphalan flufenamide withdrawal. However, companies have voluntarily withdrawn accelerated approvals when the confirmatory trials have failed to verify clinical benefit or when other criteria for withdrawal have been met, usually following a discussion between the FDA and the company. And as I mentioned earlier, the majority of the accelerated approvals have been for oncology indications. In oncology, 30 of these 201 accelerated approval indications have been withdrawn. As you write in your perspective article, the Consolidated Appropriations Act passed in December 2022 made changes to the withdrawal process and related FDA authorities. What did those reforms entail? Yes, in the Consolidated Appropriations Act 2023, Congress revised Section 506 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to modernize the accelerated approval program. Among other revisions in the Consolidation Appropriations Act 2023, Congress provided FDA with the authority to require a confirmatory trial to be underway prior to accelerated approval. Additionally, this act introduced expedited procedures for withdrawal 
if a confirmatory trial conducted to verify the clinical benefit of an indication that was granted accelerated approval failed to verify clinical benefit or other conditions for withdrawal were met. As part of the expedited procedures for withdrawal, FDA is required to provide the sponsor due notice and an explanation for the proposed withdrawal. Additionally, the procedures for withdrawal require providing an opportunity for public comment on the proposed withdrawal and publication of a summary of the public comments and the response to such comments on the FDA's website. The previous requirement for an opportunity for a hearing was replaced with an opportunity for the sponsor to request a meeting with the commissioner or the commissioner's designee. However, convening and consulting an advisory committee on issues related to the withdrawal, if requested by the sponsor, was needed only if such an advisory committee was not held previously to discuss issues related to the withdrawal. So the first accelerated approval that was withdrawn using this pathway in February of this year was the approval of malfalon flufenamide. For what indications was that drug approved and what evidence led to the FDA's initial decision to grant it this accelerated approval? Malfalon flufenamide was initially approved in February 2021. It was in combination with dexamethasone for the treatment of adult patients with relapsed or refractory multiple myeloma who had received at least four prior lines of therapy and whose disease was refractory to at least one proteasome inhibitor, one immunomodulatory agent, and one CD38-directed monoclonal antibody, or what we commonly refer to as triple-class refractory. The approval was based on an intermediate clinical endpoint of overall response rate, supported by the durability of that response, and an assessment of safety based on a single-arm trial. The intended population for which melphalan fufenamide was approved had limited treatment options, and the benefit risk in this context supported accelerated approval. So I would like to point out that the intermediate clinical endpoint of overall response rate is an accepted endpoint to supported accelerated approval for the treatment of patients with multiple myeloma and other oncology diseases. For a product approved under the accelerated approval pathway, as mentioned previously, FDA has required that the applicant conduct appropriate post-approval studies to verify and describe the clinical benefit of the product. The OCEAN trial was a phase three clinical trial designed to verify the clinical benefit of melphalan flufenamide. And then what findings in that confirmatory trial did the FDA find concerning? Yes, so the results from the OCEAN submitted in June 2021 showed that the OCEAN trial failed to demonstrate a statistically significant improvement in the primary endpoint of progression-free survival as assessed by an independent review committee in the malflan flufenamide arm compared to the pomalidomide control arm, thus failing to verify the anticipated clinical benefit. Although the sponsor contended that the progression-free survival endpoint was met based on a post hoc revised analysis, FDA disagreed that the consideration of this post hoc revised analysis was appropriate. Even if it were, the treatment effect estimates with respect to the difference in the median progression-free survival did not exceed two months, too small. Furthermore, the two-month difference in progression-free survival improvement, as reported regardless of the analysis methods, did not translate to a benefit in overall survival. Rather, a potential detriment in overall survival was observed. The median overall survival was approximately five months lower in the malflan flufenamide arm compared to the control arm. The overall survival provides an assessment of not only efficacy, but also the safety. And the lower overall survival results in malflan flufenamide arm indicated a potential safety concern. Additionally, there were high rates of toxicity and dose delays and dose reductions in the malflan flufenamide arm in the OCEAN trial, indicating potential concerns with the approved dose. Thank you, Dr. Kanapuru.